Oh, I need to start working out again. Jeez, Louise, baby. <sighs> oh, YouTube. What's going on? It's your boy, Buddha. Back in the building today with some more Last Claudia content. Although we are not in game today, I wanted to take this time uh, to make a video going back to just discussing some general topics in Last Claudia. Today's topic of discussion is going to be specifically Arc Ether rewards and those that you can get from SSR arcs from the general pool, okay? So this isn't going to include any LRs or URs or Rs or SRs uh, for a couple of reasons. One is just for time's sake. Two is because LRs and URs are very limited. Not everyone is going to have them. The majority are not, especially if you're a very new player starting off. And R and SR arcs, uh, you're going to get those arc ether rewards in time uh, so maybe I can do a review on them in a different video, but like I said, for mainly the sake of time, I want to just review those arcs, uh, those arc ether rewards that you can get from the general banner, because this is information that will be relevant to any player at any point in the game, uh, at least regarding the current SSR arc pool and those weapons that are available. Now I got... To start this video with the shout outs, right? Uh, first and foremost, let me just say a huge thank you to Lake. Uh, I've talked about him in videos in the past plenty of times. He is the owner and developer for the website that we are using to look at all of the items. Uh, there's this amazing filter system. We can see we're gonna be focusing on the equipment tab to look at the arc weapons today. He's continuing to push updates, but just the fact that he's doing this for free, making this incredible resource for us last Cloudians, you can go to this website and buy him a pull. Uh, which is great. I love it. It says buy me a drink. You switch. It says buy me a pull. Uh, I have donated to him in the past and it's definitely, he definitely deserves it. So if you've got some spare change and you use this site often, please go show him some love. Couple other shout outs. I want to say to my boy Hellfire, uh, who I talk to regularly in the discord. I was having trouble figuring out an idea for today's video and he brought up, how about you review some Arc Ether rewards? I said, hey, that's a great idea. I haven't really done a deep dive or close look at the list of available Arc Ether rewards, which is a huge part of this game. Something that you're going to focus on more mid game and further, but something to be aware of nonetheless. And of course, Demos, Demos, the Demented Panda, he had actually sent me a list of Arc Ether rewards from a guy's website, Potato, who ended up quitting last uh, June in 2020. Sadly, he seemed like a really, really dedicated and committed player however under whatever circumstances he has left the game uh, I decided to go with Lake's list since it is the most up to date so big shout out to Demos for always throwing me the resources when I need them and with the shout outs out the way let me preface this video by saying I do not own all of these items in game yet as we speak, I am Arc Ether grinding. Uh, just got myself a couple weapons that I'm very happy to have, but I do not own them. Also, a lot of these opinions that I have on the items are going to be speculation. And y'all already know I am totally open for the criticism or for anything that I'm missing. Shoot it in the comments so I can learn and others watching and reading those comments can learn as well. The point of this review is going, we're going to be taking a look at these weapons, looking at what they do, maybe talking about uh, situations I've used them in or their best situations potentially, uh, and then deciding on whether it's worth using your Ethereum on. And then from there you can kind of prioritize which arcs you have, uh, what your goals are, things like that. First one is the Sword of Kusanagi. It's as basic of a weapon as you can get. And I believe it's from one of the early, early SSR arcs, Divine Beast Hunter, we can see here. It's a neutral type element with 179 strength, flat, nothing else, no special effects. I do like my neutral element weapons because if you did not know, whenever you regular attack, uh, they, your regular attack adopts the element of whatever 
weapon you are using. So we'll see other elemental type weapons moving forward. And just know that let's say you have a weapon that has the thunder element attached to it. If the enemy you are regular attacking resist thunder in any way, your damage will be mitigated. So that's why neutral typings on weapons is typically preferred because you don't have to worry about any resistances for strategies that involve goddess kiss or anything that you need to absorb by a percentage of the damage of your regular attacks you're doing. This is definitely not something I would spend my Ethereon on. The next one we're going to look at is Kikuichimonji. Oh, I must have butchered that one. However, let's look at it. It is a neutral type sword, uh, 171 strength boost it does have an effect plus 50 percent damage for the first hit in regular attacks and this you're going to get from the ssr arc foreign land magrona a great arc because it comes with the skill sharp eyes however it's arc ether reward i would say is pretty meh uh, 171 is not the worst strength boost it's not the best neutral type attacking like i said is great but plus 50 percent damage for the first hit in regular attacks that just does not excite me at all. Regular attacks are not the meta. It's all about your physical attacks, aka your skill damage now. So I can't see this being a weapon you want to focus your Ethereum on either. Next weapon we're looking at, Cursed Sword Crestbane. Uh, this is a sword with the dark element attached to it. You can see that this whole top section is completely blank. That is because it gives you no stat boosts in any area. And it has kind of an interesting slash weird effect. Wave start increased strength by 25%. In parentheses, it says plus 168. Yeah, if I, I switched it to Ray and you can see it's now adjusted to plus 165. So just know if you're looking on Lake's website, that's what's determining this uh, actual flat number is whichever character you have selected over here. However, let's get back to it. Increase strength by 25% of base mind and reduce base mind by... 50%. I don't know if that trade-off is worth it. Uh, the note below is example, a unit with 1800 base mind will have plus 450 strength, but mind will become 900 for the duration of the battle. That is a steep cost, especially if you're fighting someone who's dishing out magic damage. Uh, warning, decreased mind will cause unit to take more magic damage and heal less HP. Hmm. You get it from the arc Sword of Corpses, which is a good arc in itself, uh, a good arc for sword users in particular. However, this sword just doesn't excite me too much. I forgot to say in the beginning, we're, going, we're taking a look at these items. Some of them are able to be enhanced. So I believe this sword in particular can get up to plus 40, which gives it plus 40 strength. But even then, you're getting what in Ray's case right here, you're getting plus 165 plus it, even at fully enhanced plus 40. So 205 strength, but you're decreasing your mind by half, which is going to affect, like it says, it's going to affect things like proud force, which do a percent uh, that, which do a, a heal amount based on your mind. And that strength boost just does not warrant the sacrifice in mind. In my opinion, Maybe there are some workarounds and strategies to make this sword look really good. But as far as I've seen, this is not going to be in any meta type build. So again, another kind of skip low priority to use your Ethereans to get this sword. Brisk Blade Zestina. Now this, I think, is a very, very decent arc the reward. It comes with the ice attribute 192 to strength, 30 to defense, and 30 to mind. Its effect when killing an enemy, plus 3 SC to all skills. So very, very good for multi-wave, uh, multi-enemy type stages. Uh, and you get it from the arc Icy Guardian, which also is a great arc in itself. I think this arc ether reward makes that arc very useful as well. Although you are attaching the ice element. So like I said, you got to deal with decreased damage from enemies with any type of ice resistance. However, its effect is really nice. The plus three SCT when you kill an enemy, it's almost like a an attached pose of glory skill to this weapon. It's got a nice 192 strength boost for weapons. Anything hovering around the 200 range, you're looking at some nice stat boosts 
for sure. And then just a little extra 30 and 30 on the defense stats. I think a very, very good sword. Definitely not your number one priority to use Ethereum, but if you've gotten some of your best Arc Ether rewards already, this would not be a bad grab for a lot of sword type users. Looking at Dark Sickle Marius, uh, it is a, it's an axe type weapon. Also with the dark element attached to it and a 199 strength boost, no effect. A decently statted axe for units. It does have the dark attribute attached to it, which can be seen as a hindrance. Uh, and with no effects, I would say this is also a very low priority to farm up its own ether you get it from the arc god of the dead which is already a very mid to low tier arc so yeah yeah gonna call a low priority getting this arc ether reward for sure lapis axe jilvin as the name states is an axe weapon uh, it does have neutral typing which i like 211 to the strength which is also nice it has the effect of plus 100 counter damage i feel like counter is definitely a mechanic that's not utilized very much. I could see it being utilized for tank style units, but with those being totally irrelevant to the meta, I really have zero idea of how this counter damage performs in game. Uh, you know, that's something I'd probably test when I've done as much as I want to do and I'm bored, so I'm testing out tanking units. You get it from Terror of the Grana Seas. Uh, I think this would be incredible. However, its effect, like I was saying, is almost irrelevant to today's meta. So your real bonuses are just that it has a neutral typing and a 211 style attack. But you can get those benefits elsewhere with some better weapons as we'll see as we keep moving down. So this is also, I'd say, a lower priority for farming this up or using your Ethereum on it. Earthly Javelin Refia is a spear with the earth element 155 to strength 85 to intelligence and 54 to defense i really like that stat boost combo uh, it has the effect plus 20 percent damage for all earth attacks and you get it from the arc the final oath something i want so bad that's the arc that comes with the skill guard charge so if you do like ivos's guard build uh, you can get extra SCT every time your uh, your unit guards. I actually really like this weapon and would wanted to test it on Shift Labet. You'd obviously have to give her spear equip. I don't think she can equip spears naturally. If she can, please correct me. Since she scales off both strength and intelligence, she's a one-to-one -one ratio unit. I feel like this weapon could be nice if you don't have her best in slot weapons. Shout out to Demos for that lingo. Uh, and it gives her here plus 20% damage flat for all earth attacks, which is what Labette attacks with. So I just see this being a very, very decent uh, weapon for her and would like to try it out. But like I said, I don't have the final oath. And there are definitely other Arc Ether rewards I would prioritize over getting this because it's more of an alternative weapon to use in my head. I'd say this is kind of mid-tier for prioritizing using your Ethereum to get it. King Fiend Horns. I've discussed this. I thought it would be great. I still think it is a great weapon for DeGrogue in particular since we, we just saw the release of her. It is a spear with the dark element attached to it. 192 strength, 75 to defense. It has the effect physical attacks will activate the following effects 20% chance to ignore 50% defense and 20% chance to ignore 50% of attribute resistance. This is going to look very good on DeGrogue. I feel uh, it's not, its effect is pretty potent, not quite as OP as the weapon Trishula that we're going to take a look at later. But again, you got to work with what you got. And if this is a, a if you have the Arc Unchained Beast, you have DeGrogue, or you have Sukasa from the Dr. Stone collab, you may want to look into getting this weapon depending on, you know, your prioritizations. I would say this is still kind of a low to mid tier prioritization when farming for your Arcs Ether reward. But once you get it, I think you can have a lot of fun with it. Next up is Dragoon Spike. It's also a spear, comes with the thunder element, 200 to health, which is nice, 208 
to strength even better and 68 to defense so it does outshine the spear that we just looked at its effect plus 10 percent in sct when attacking an airborne enemy plus 10 percent critical rate for physical attacks this comes from the arc ether reward rebel dragoons now uh, an easy comparison we're looking at these two if you have both of these arcs and you're debating on which one to prioritize first in getting for your spear user like the grogue or sukasa uh, it seems to be a general consensus that dragoon spike does take the cake plus 10 percent skill charge speed is just so valuable comes with better stat boosts and this plus 10 percent critical rate for physical attacks when knocking an enemy airborne is actually much easier to do than a lot of people think so the benefits to this weapon just outshine the king fiend horns placing the dragoon spike i'd say at a higher priority to get this weapon if you're looking for a good spear moving on to some hammers we're looking at broken gate lavandus uh, it is like i said a hammer with the earth type element 238 to strength very nice and 63 to mind its effect physical attacks have a five percent chance to instantly break an enemy's guard there aren't a lot of situations where this effect's going to be useful so i don't see it being that prominent it's that's not really one of its selling points you get it from apparition gate utilaire that's a mouthful but just like the axe we saw from the Arctera of Granases, I don't see this effect being prevalent enough to warrant prioritizing grinding this weapon out or using Ethereum for it. Uh, its only selling point in my eyes is this 238 strength boost, which is considerable. Uh, however, this still ranks as kind of a low priority. Uh, when it comes to arc ether farming for it but now looking at zervaga sledge is another hammer neutral type element y'all know why i like that uh, a little less strength than the previous hammer just 200 but its effect when wave starts activate the following effects increase strength by 10 percent of base int and reduce base int by 10 percent and then increase strength by 10 percent of base mind and reduce mind by 10 percent so to simplify what that does you subtract 10 percent of your int you subtract 10 percent of your mind add those two numbers together and put that on your strength for damage focus builds on characters like merity this sledge is going to work fantastic i actually did uh, take the time to grind up this arc ether reward specifically for Merity since I took the time to build her out and when it comes to hammers if you're looking for a good one this would probably take the priority in my opinion you get it from the arc doom dozer which is a cool arc in itself not top tier but not bad either uh, so overall this I'd say mid to high priority if you need a good hammer weapon moving on to some bows We got star road the heavenly bow uh, It does have the earth type element attached to it 149 strength 88 mind not the best its effect plus 10% critical rate for earth and light skills this isn't bad this is actually a pretty decent effect right here if you're relevant to these two uh, elements you get it from the arc heaven's bow star lord that arc comes with some useful abilities for long range attackers that we've seen maglion in particular but with only 149 strength uh, no intelligence i would say this is still a pretty low priority arc ether reward to grind for not something I'd put my Ethereum towards early game. Magic Rifle Lapsus is a machine weapon, a neutral element, 22 MP and 143 to strength. Its effect plus 10% damage against enemies with a weakness to attacks attribute. You get this from the arc Skyship Lomvalian, which is a very, very good uh arc it that's uh, that arc actually comes with machine equip so if the unit can't naturally equip machines you can use the arc to get its arc ether reward on that unit i've actually wanted to try this weapon with the skill weak point boost that you get from the arc the ruins of saint marius or something like that uh, because it's going to give you plus 10 percent damage to the weakness which is also what weak point boost does except that gives you a 30 percent so together they're going to give you a plus 40 percent damage boost if you're attacking an enemy weak to the element you're attacking with 
Not the craziest stat boost in the world, but I just really would like to try this effect. Again, I, this is not one that I have at the moment, so I'd say this is probably still low to mid tier. Uh, priority and now we're looking at probably the most important weapon on this list I've mentioned it before covert gun Trishula is the way I think it's properly pronounced it is a light element uh, 156 strength which isn't crazy you can now enhance it to plus 40 with the uh, shift lilibet event that rolled around a couple months ago makes it even better because it brings it up to like 196 very close to 200 but its effect is what sells even without a plus 40 enhancement. Skills will ignore 100% of the enemy's attribute resistance. That means if you are DB Ray attacking with your thunder and the enemy has 100 resistance to the thunder element, it don't matter. You're going to hit them as if they had a zero resistance to thunder because that is what this weapon does. It's pretty insane. Uh, let's read Lake's note. It's worth pointing out that this AER is one of the more valuable AERs in the game, since it'll cause the enemy to behave as if it has zero attribute resistance against your skills. It is only applicable to your skills 1, 2, and 3, not your regular attacks, not your specials, not magic damage. Keep that in mind, but since skills are basically the meta, physical attackers are the meta in this game at the moment, this is going to be your number one priority out of this entire list as soon as you get the arc Chaldina the great dump your ethereum all your ethereum all your arc ether farming efforts into getting this weapon right here moving on to mecha cannon veldis it is also a machine with the thunder element attached to it 169 strength and 95 int which actually is very good its effect physical attacks and special have a 10% chance to add a Thunder Pursuit attack that deals 99% to 100%, 101%, excuse me, of damage. Uh, very, very nice kind of side effect. And you get it from the Arc Ether Reward Mecha Dragon Veldios. I want that Arc. I want this AER so bad. I really like its combo of Strength and Int boosts. Overall, just a solid weapon. Its effect isn't extremely OP but it's just a nice bonus to have. So I'd say this is definitely a kind of mid-tier priority if you're looking for a good machine weapon. Moving on to Claws. All right, Fire Claw Legulono Magna. Uh, this is a fire style claw with 158 strength to it. Its effect is dope, okay? Plus 15% to skill damage. This is actually one of the first AER weapons that I grinded up specifically for Ray because Ray was my first character I started investing in. I focused on completely and I wanted this uh, weapon on him. I also got the arc it comes on, Phoenix Blow, very early on. So if you're missing some of Ray's endgame weapons like his claw, that you get from beating the endgame boss Lambda or Trishula or you're using Trishula on someone else this is a very very solid alternative claw to use for Ray to get his claw high boosts and give him just a flat plus 15% skill damage uh, this is something now that I have Ray's kind of optimal weapons I would be using this on probably a character like Dilmordo he's going to love 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 this weapon so I'd actually give this a mid to high tier priority ranking in regards to its effect alone plus 15% skill damage that's just flat across the board so even if you have to give a character claw equip from the uh, arc beast hunter which is an SR arc you can give any of your physical damagers a very nice weapon uh, just to deal a little more damage at any point in your account progression. Venacleave is actually a Claw that I just got minutes ago uh, from Arc Ether Farming. I'm excited to use it. It's a, a claw with the dark element, 170 to strength and 66 to intelligence. Very nice. Its effect regular attacks have a 3% chance to inflict poison per hit and then plus 50% damage against enemies inflicted with poison. Uh, it comes from the Arc Venom Dragon Babalad. If you couldn't already tell or if you didn't already know, V loves this weapon. V can deal some crazy nice physical damage with Venocleave since he's already a status ailment placer using Anula Melf, decreasing the enemy's status ailment resistances. 
you're going to be able to poison the enemies much easier. V's uh, regular attack has a ton of hits on his normal attack and he spits it out like a machine gun. Uh, so it's just going to help you with skills like Terror Melf, Terror Melf 2. I also wanted to use this on a character like Logia and see how it performed. I even thought about putting this on Gen and trying to do a DPS status ailment build with Gen, which is TBD on if it's really that effective or not. But if you can get the poison ailment on an enemy, you're getting plus 50% damage, which is huge. It's pretty much the only time poison is relevant in this game at the moment. Because of how situational it is, I don't want to give it a very high priority. And because it's pretty niche, I'd still say it's mid-tier. does have some nice stat boosts to play around with uh, if you're looking to go for a status ailment build on someone. All right, moving on to staves. Godly Staff Apocalypse. This staff, okay, let's look at it. It comes with the light element, 25 to MP, 71 to strength, 200 to intelligence, and 120 to mind. Some great monstrous stat boosts. Its effect, enable healing magic to deal critical hits. What does that mean? It means that your 2,000 typical healing amount can now crit for what well, let's say 4000 or whatever critical boost that you're going to be getting that sounds really good on paper let's read the note critical heals use the same critical hit rate as physical attacks which means that if you are using this staff any crit ups that you have on the character will enable you to crit heal more often than not. Looking at the warning, critical heals are unaffected by critical damage though. Equipping skills like passive advanced aim vitals will not boost the heal amount. That comes from the arc March of the Saints. Here's the thing, when I first read that, I thought, oh man, I'm about to have the most broken healer in the game. She's going to be so OP. I had Spirit Maiden Tyria at the time, and I thought, man, this is just going to make her a healing monster. Guess what? She's a healing monster without it. Her innate mind stat and healing boosts that she comes with innately make it so if she's critting on her heals or not, she's healing the character to max HP regardless. So the only real benefits that I see from this weapon are the stat boosts in itself, 25 to MP, the uh, 71 and 200 to int, and then 120 to mind. This effect sadly is a bit irrelevant for your majority of healers. Now, if you've got a character like Gen, I think he likes this staff a lot. If you're not going for a, you know, mind stacking, healing boost build, you're going more alt, uh, DPS, you're using his crit ups, you're using what comes in his kit. This staff actually works on him very nicely because when he does a skill like Glass Record, he doesn't have a, so much mind built into him that he's healing everyone for max HP. Those crits can actually come into use, but that's a very specific situation. It stinks that it has kind of this light element attached to it as well. It'd be great if it was neutral. So just keep that in mind that, like I said, at least my impression of this when I first read it was that it was so good, but I think it's just kind of irrelevant when you're talking about your standard healers and if they actually need crits on their heels or not. Looking at Maha's Wand, I actually did just get the arc for this in my latest summoning video. It is a staff with the light element attached to it, 40 to your MP, 65 to strength, 182 to int, and 167 for your mind, very good. It's effect plus 30% to light magic. I think uh, Lily or Shift Lily would like this staff a lot and it comes from the art Great Temple Maha. I know this is regarded as one of the best staves for any mage if you're going the spellcaster route. I mean, it does give you really nice boosts, 40 to MP, you got your 182 to in, 167 to mind. Kind of stinks that it is just relevant to light magic, which isn't the most prominent magic in the game currently, but definitely useful if you are focusing on that type of uh, magic damage. I'd say this is definitely a mid to high range priority if you are working on a caster and want to get them a good staff to use. However, I would prioritize getting this staff that we're about to look at, Heaven's Cry, it's got a neutral typing attached to it, 50 to MP, 102 to strength, and a fat 216 
to int. It's effect plus 30% critical damage for magic attack, and you get it from Divine Beast Laug Mechia. This, arc, this weapon goes hand in hand with its arc because Laug Mechia allows you to crit on all magic elements, which typically need an extra skill, allowing that attack magic to deal critical damage. This arc allows everything, every all magic to crit. So you pair that with its staff it comes with, and now you get this plus 30% critical damage for whatever magic you're using. Just like with the Maha weapon, its effect is nice when it comes into play, but what makes it shine a bit more for me is that it comes with this fat 216, 102, and 50 MP. Just some better stat boosts in the attack-oriented field for any mage. So again, a mid to high tier prioritization on using Ethereum for this, and definitely a tier above Maha's wand. Finally, looking at the last on our list. Man, we're looking at Skyfire Meteor Staff. Uh, this is a fire type staff. 42 to MP, 191 to Int, and 179 to Mind. Very, very nice. Effect plus 30% damage for fire magic, and you get it from Radia's Starry Calamity. This is basically the fire staff. Uh, it's the fire version of Maha's Wand without any strength boost on it. Not much to say about it. It's a good staff, especially if you're using fire magic. So if you're using a lot of meteor rains, you're going to like this staff. So kind of that same medium, like if you have Radius Starry Calamity or Maha's Wand, it's basically which which magic element do you want to increase at that point. But same, same priority ranking as what I mentioned before. Oh! That was a list. That was a list, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, this was a very, very limited list. Keep that in mind. There are definitely LR Archether rewards and UR Archether rewards that far outshine a lot of what we just looked at here. But because of their limited nature, I didn't want to include this in this list. Maybe I'll do one in the future just to keep these kinds of reviews focused and narrow so we don't have two hour long videos of me going over everything at the same time. But I did want to look through this list for you guys as well as myself just to see the description, see any extra notes that Lake had added, and analyze what we can get from the Arc Ether rewards in the general pool from arcs you can pull at any point in time in the game because there are definitely some gems. Uh, if you take anything away from this video, you get Caldina the Great, you use all your Ethereum to get Trishula, okay? What did y'all think? Are there any weapons that I may be underestimated or undervalued. Uh, there, Like I said, I don't own a lot of these weapons, so many of the opinions were speculative based on what I'm using and have currently in the game. I'm interested to see your thoughts and what you think. If you like these kinds of videos, let me know and maybe I can go through the available armor that you can get through Arc Ether rewards, accessories, just keep on going down the list because there is so much. There is no shortage of things to look at and review in this game. I just want to know if y'all are interested and then you know your boy will be bringing you those videos. So, that's all I got for you this time. Hope you're having a good day. Like I always say, work hard, play harder. See you in the next video.